If I were to ask you to describe yourself in three words, what would you tell me? Take a minute, think. What would you tell me? Who are you? Okay, got your three words? Now, what if I were to ask somebody else in your life to describe you, say your spouse, a sibling, a friend, one of your kids, what three words would they use to describe you? Again, take a minute and think. Okay, are they the same three words or different three words? I'm guessing they're different, right? Why is that? Because we're not all one person. We're lots of different sides of the same person and we show different bits of ourselves in different ways to different people in different situations. Now, in this week's parasha, we have two twins who from birth are completely, completely different to each other. But not only that, their two parents see them in completely different lights as well. If you were to ask Yitzchok to describe Esau, he would say he is such a mensch, he is the best son, he always does everything that I ask him to do. He is the paradigm of Kibbutz And that's how he goes down in history. That is the one mitzvah he does extraordinarily well. And if you were to ask Rivka, she would give you a knowing look and say, Nebuch is a bit of a rusher, you know, big disappointment. And she doesn't, you can see, she doesn't really like him. She doesn't interact with him in the same way at all as how Yitzchak interacts with him. So and what does this mean? Which one was he really? Does he, is it two different sides of the same coin? Or is he really a rusher? Or is he really a tzaddik if he does this one mitzvah extraordinarily well? So the Arachim comments on this week's Edra, and he says that actually, He's not surprised that Esau turns out the way he does, despite him having a, an amazing set of parents like Esau and Rivka. Rivka comes from a really bad family, and it's no surprise that she would have a child like Esau because her brother was evil, her father was evil. Obviously, she's going to have a child that turns out evil. That's no surprise. He's almost saying that he's genetically evil. Is that a thing? Can you be programmed before you're even born to be bad? That's quite a disturbing thought, really, isn't it? Now, this argument that Yaakov and Esau have in this week's Sedra is not a new argument. If you look, there's two other sets of brothers much earlier on in the Torah who have exactly the same argument. Going back right to the beginning, Cain and Hevel argue about how they're going to split up the earth. Who gets what? Who gets their share of the inheritance? And it ends up being that Cain kills Hevel. And again, later on, we have Yitzchak and Yishmael have a fight and Sarah sees Yishmael is threatening to kill Yitzchak. And again, the commentaries tell us this is what they're arguing over, their inheritance. So it almost comes as no surprise that this, if this is like a family argument that's been going back in generations, so this next generation of kids is also going to be having the same argument. So maybe that's the answer. That's why they are the way they are. That's why they have this interaction with each other, because that's what it's always been like in that family. That's what their experience is. Medrash Rabbah tells us that when Rivka's pregnant with them, she knows whenever she goes past the base of Medrash, one of the kids struggles within her womb. And whenever she goes past the place of idol worship, the other kid struggles within her womb. And she goes and finds out from Hashem what this is all about. And all he says is, to, he tells her there's two children, there'll be two different nations, and they're going to be different to each other, that one is going to always struggle against the other, and that one will serve the other. He doesn't actually say one's going to be bad and one's going to be good. That is how she chooses to interpret it because of what happens every time she goes past a good place and a bad place. And this information she has, she never shares with Yitzhak. Yitzhak's completely in the dark about this. And we see that the way they treat their children is completely different as a result. Rivka has this insider's knowledge and Yitzhak is completely in the dark. He doesn't know anything about this. So my question is really, did Esau have to turn out the way he did because of this prophecy, because one was always going to be this and one was always going to be this? Or did he turn out differently as a result of Rifka treating him differently because of her interpretation of the prophecy? And in that way, the prophecy became self-fulfilling. So maybe really it's a combination of all these things. Maybe it's partly genetics. You know, he had these bad genes from Rifka's side of the family. Maybe it's experiences. He has this family history of everyone arguing over inheritance, which we know nowadays is often still the case in families. Or maybe it was his home environment. Maybe he was just treated differently and that's why he turned out the way that he did. And we see Yaakov's later criticized for withholding Dina from Esau. And we're told that if actually, if Dina had married Esau, she would have had such a positive influence on him, he would have turned out to be a massive tzaddik. And actually, Yaakov and Esau would both have been tzaddikim, which means that the world as we know it would be completely, completely different to how it is now, with Yaakov and Esau still at each other's throats. 
So we see he had the potential to change. He had the potential to turn out differently. And similarly with us, we don't need to allow ourselves to be defined either by somebody else or by ourselves as being a certain way and just accept that that's who we are and that's who we always will be and say to ourselves, oh, I couldn't possibly do that. That's just not very me. Or, you know, she could do that, but I would never do something like that. You may have certain tendencies. You may naturally be a certain way because of genetics, because of your home, because of your upbringing, because of your experiences, but you have the power to channel them in any direction and really to be whoever you want to be. The choice is yours. Have a good week and a good Shabbos.